AB Imbev's new look brewing behemoth will produce almost a third of the world's beer. Much of it a sparkling amber brew manufactured and marketed under a myriad of different names. There they are, they both have an array of brands which they now have to try and swap around so they're not seen to be a monopoly. Brands of lagers, which I have to say all seem to not only look the same, but in my view actually taste the same, but very strong individual brands. So this is now trying to actually do this deal, so they both end up uh, a stronger as a result of it. But nonetheless, actually, it really, what does it achieve in terms of corporate strength? Not a huge amount. The deal, agreed in Brussels and London last year, faced hurdles in its path to completion. Global regulators insisted SAB Miller's Peroni, Grolsch and Meantime brands were sold off. And in the summer, AB InBev was forced to raise its offer to SAB Miller shareholders following the post-Brexit fall in the value of the pound. Now though, what will be the world's top tipple should prove pleasing at least for investors. What I think is interesting is not so much for the company but for the shareholders this is actually probably quite good news. Why? Because these businesses are cash cows. They throw off lots of profit, good dividends, because we always drink beer and people aren't going to be stopping drinking beer anytime soon and particularly with big brands like this, many of which are very fashionable. And if they do go out of fashion, don't worry because they're bound to develop another brand behind that one. The takeover is expected to boost AB InBev's prospects of developing markets in China and Africa, where an SAB Miller joint venture, Snow Beer, has huge sales. So the takeover is what analysts say could be a good deal for investors. But what about customers? Because after this deal, wherever you go in the world, there's a 30% chance you'll be drinking products from a single company. Richard Bestick, CCTV, London.